Good evening. <laughs> so, I'm going to talk about GraphQL for Rails today. I'm Sam, and I'm not here to convince you that GraphQL is bad and whatever technology. Okay, it's just to introduce to you, and you make your own judgment. Okay. So, if you visit our company website, this is all you see. It's a terminal. A um, couple of commands. Check it out, and. Um, we expose, well, we share a little bit of what we do here, like um, extreme programming, US and design, Phoenix, React Native. And this is one of our team, Venus. At, if some of you guys don't know, this is like Haiti Lao. And, um, probably a couple of months, yeah. once every few months, yeah. We try to do it a lot, often, more often. And I shamelessly squeeze myself into the RDRC 2017 community. <laughs> Uh, and have a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, but what we're going to talk about today is really GraphQL. Uh, GraphQL has been invented by Facebook back in 2012, but it open sourced it kind of like 2016, thereabouts. Um, that's the URL, you can read it up, it's the uh, RFC spec. Um, but there are also other companies using GraphQL. Today, you can actually learn GraphQL from GitHub. Their version for API actually is in GraphQL. That's actually my starting point. And that gave me a lot of um, confidence. And they also use GraphQL Ruby Jam. Shopify also uses GraphQL. Yep. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is comparable to REST API. It's comparable to, comparable to RPC in terms of stack, right? Uh, in terms of where it should be. Um, all different, right? They all have pros and cons. And um, so it depends on your application. It depends on your architecture. Yeah. Um, just like REST, it doesn't do authorization. You can kind of like squeeze it in. Some of the frameworks give you that. Some of the packages give you that. But you can totally do your own authorization. Or you can choose to use something that is uh, platform agnostic like JWT. And then you have the persistent layer, of course. So that's like your Postgres, your Redis storage layer. Good example of a GraphQL example um, on the website itself is that the query is a JSON format. The response is a JSON format. That's the basic idea of GraphQL. I'm going to do a little demo right away um, by switching to this tab. Is the font large enough? This is a public GraphQL UI that you can use to query the actual uh, backend. And it's actually on graphqlhub.com. So as you, uh, the reason why I use this demo is because it's quite familiar with all of us. It's querying GitHub, actually. You can see that the, the, the name of the query is test query. The resource of querying is GitHub. And I'm querying for a repo under GitHub. I could actually change the name of the repo if I want to. I could change the owner name if I want to. Um, I could limit, change the limit to the commits, call it again. I'll now pull more commits, okay, commit messages. I can say that I want more fields, pressing uh, command, oh sorry, control space, it gives me all the fields, possible fields, see I put in status, okay, and there we go, it actually pulls up, pulls up all the status of the report itself, success pending, or the CI status, and you also notice that actually order completes some of the fields. So what does it really mean? It means that GraphQL, but we're using GraphQL, you can actually specify what is the return format of the JSON from the backend. That's one of the characteristics of GraphQL. You also notice that I'm using a merge uh, uh, operator here that performs a merge to my result. It's called GitHub user profile, but that's actually a custom fragment. It's one of the features of GraphQL, it's called fragment. Um, think of it like partials, right? Um, rendering partials. But instead, I have a partial um, query params that can merge on the fly. So I say I want a, a GitHub user ID, I want a URL, a Vata URL. And if you notice that some of the fields, they are like on their own. So that means that, hey, I want a repo. Please give me the name of the repo over here. That's GraphQL. Give me the owner of the repo. It returns the owner object. 
But over here in my fragment, you notice that I have a key and value. What does it mean? Well, what it does, it does aliasing, which means if I want the returning JSON to have a key of my own name, instead of ID, I want GitHub user ID, I can actually alias it like that. By creating an alias, I can change the return JSON key values. Yeah. Okay. So this is a very straightforward um, uh, demo. I can actually pull even more, like figure out the branches, click, give me a uh, list of branch names. Yeah, fairly straightforward. Okay, that's the basic idea. Let me go back to my slides. Okay. So these are some of the, the features of GraphQL. Um, the, the get requests or the index requests, uh, show requests, they're like the query. The updates, the posts are called the mutations. Um, so in GraphQL, there's a thing called schema. You have to define the schema. You have to define the data types. They can be optional, mandatory. There are fields. There are data type fields, um, Boolean, integer, string. You can use variables in your query, so you don't have to like put the double quotes and the hard quote the string in your, in your query, the aliases, the directives. Um, fragments, you can do inline fragments or you can do name fragments, uh, makes it more reusable. Interfaces and unions is something I did not demonstrate. Um, interfaces means that you're trying to query for return object type that shares common fields. So I want, um, say I want to define such that I could return a student Right? A student could have a, a GitHub account embedded into the JSON, or a student could have a Facebook account embedded in the student object. Um, or I could have unions that does not share common fields or hierarchy. So I say I want to know the presenter of today's um, meetup. It could be a developer, it could be a chef, it could be anyone. Right? So how to set up GraphQL for, for Rails? Fairly straightforward. You jam install uh, GraphQL. Um, you can also install the graphical UI, which I've just shown you just now. Okay, and then bundle install and run Rails generate GraphQL install. That will mount the graphical UI onto your uh, 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 routes. And you need to add the uh, auto load pass for the types. Um, this is to uh, auto load all the GraphQL data types that you would customize. Yeah. Um, just now, I think I queried for GitHub, um, um, GitHub repos, right? Those will be considered types. Yeah. Okay, by default, when you install um, the gem and you run install, it will actually create um, the default controllers. Okay, so here's a, a, a type that I, I created for today. Um, the type is student type with an ID, a name, a student number, faculty, and updated I created that. Very straightforward. And I have a query type, um, students and student. Okay, so with that, I'm going to show you. Uh, okay. What this means. So let me launch it. Okay. So the, the query name is called graduator. I'm asking for students. So it means it's going to be an array of students. I ask for, I'm going to ask for ID, name, student number, and faculty. Okay? Straightforward. It turns immediately because it's localhost. It's a MyRose app. So I have like ID, name, student number 007, faculty science, right? I could also add a extra field called graduated and graduated is all false currently false so let me put one student ID one okay this allows me to pull up one student but what if I want to make an action right I want, I want to perform a, a, a a request that changes the data um, on the back end. Say I want to change graduated to true. Well, I will need to have a mutation predefined. 
and that would be graduate graduate mutation mutation okay of course it's called graduate and so I say hey uh, um, please graduate the first student um, I will need the ID I will need the name but I do not need the student number maybe I don't need the faculty okay there you go course on the back end the back end calls a resolver. It's like, a, it's like a controller. Resolver is like a controller. And it, it, it does changes to the database and it changes the data set. Okay? Okay, let me continue. So, as you can see just now, I, I didn't write a lot of code basically. It's just defining types, right? Not too much code. And I have a student.all. I have a student find by, uh, okay, yep. Okay, fairly straightforward. What about tests? Well, if it's not standard Rails, it's not standard uh, uh, um, RAT, right? Well, you can install this gem called Aspect GraphQL Matches, okay? And uh, that's the gem for everything, right? Okay, with that, you can actually write such tests. It is expected to have a few student of type student type is expected to have a few students of type area of student type. Okay, that's quite straightforward. That was the uh, the two queries I made: a student with an ID one or students. And then I can also check if the schema is valid. I could say that you know for student type, I want to ensure that there's a few name called ID with the type of ID, name string, faculty string, student number string. Very straightforward. I could have added the uh, graduated uh, field and say type of boolean. That will work as well. With that, I thank you all. Mm. Any questions? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit longer. There's, there's a, the helper actually has all that uh, uh, saying that it should return. I call, it should return. Fairly straightforward. With the matches, it's actually very easy. Yeah. If, if not, without the matches, it's a bit harder because you have to execute the, uh, the mutation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. So, for the purpose of this um, talk, I have come up with a very straightforward one. This is the same code. Wait, let me try this guy. Come on. Wait. What? What? What's going on? Go. go. Ah, there we go. Okay. Should I bump up the code? Okay. So these two are straightforward. These are the queries to pull stuff. Mutations. I've written one here. Very straightforward. Few graduate. Type ID. And you should return a student type. And the argument for ID is mandatory. So if I were to try the previous query again, and I do it this way, it will fail. Yep. Fail graduate is missing required arguments ID. So I have to put it back inside for it to work. Oh, sorry. Graduate ID one. Mm. Did I change anything? Mm. Didn't think so. Didn't think so. Mm. Haha, <laughs> that's the uh, thing. Yes, I didn't allow that. I said find by graduate ID. Uh, graduate is false. So now it's, it's designed to uh, uh, throw back an error. But I could actually do that for a second. Thank you. That's why we do pairing, right? <laughs> okay. Cool. So, okay. So. Mutation is also fairly easy to write, but but uh, if, if if you see that I actually write actual code on my resolver, this section over here, that's just for demo, right? Uh, in in actual practice, in, when you write large scale software, we don't recommend that. We recommend that you at least wrap this around with a service class, right? And then you test the service class separately. Yeah, makes it easier to test. Um, there's also been a few school of thoughts as to how you can test uh, the resolvers, right? Um, Instead of doing a lot of mocking, one of our methods is that just um, 
do like a standard controller test where you say, okay, call controller, here's my string, query equals, right? And it should return this string of JSON. Yeah. That's how we, we, we actually do it. Yeah. We actually tried doing a service class testing. We tried testing and mocking the uh, the mutation, sorry, the uh, the resolvers. Yeah. But it's too much work. Yeah. Okay. How do I how do I choose? Yeah. Okay. So um, this is very debatable as to you know how how you make your choice. But but this is how I see it. Um, one of the one of the challenges of building uh, very large scale and long living RESTful API apps is that you end up doing API version because what you return on different versions is different, right? What you operate is different, and with GraphQL, that kind of goes away because now the client will ask for a field that it needs, right? So you, the, you, you give the, the freedom to the client. Yeah. Of course, permission will still kick in and say, hey, you don't have access to this permission, right? Yeah. But uh, otherwise, a tvOS app could ask for such fields because maybe I ask for more photos. And a mobile app, I don't want to download so much photos. I ask for only one photo and then I ask for more text, right? So same API, same resolver. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so uh, one endpoint, no API versioning, right? You allow, so the moment the resolver is, do, uh, uh, is written and well tested, right? You actually move on to your client and you do a lot more iterations over your client. Yeah. Um, that's one good reason to do that. Um, another reason is, um, your front end depends on your front end. For our front end, we use a lot of React JS and React Native. Electron. Notice they're all JavaScript based. So Apollo is there. There is a open source project called Apollo. Uh, that is the GraphQL client. It makes it extremely easy to call GraphQL. So I use the same adapter. I don't have to like write my own RESTful, you know. Yeah. Um, another reason could be I'm just lazy. I don't want to test all my controllers. Okay, every API, I add like three tests at least, right? With GraphQL, I kind of like test my service class. And if that service class is used by a lot of other queries, so be it. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes? So, I think, so you're saying that the, if the client asks for a few that's no longer available, something like that. Um, there, there are many ways to do it. There are many ways to do it. Um, one way is that you could always uh, uh, return something empty or it doesn't exist, right? You could query for it, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but it's kind of hard to tell you because it depends on your use case, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, right. Uh huh. Okay, so that's more of like API, yeah. So there the, are the many schools of thoughts. One is that you only add fields. You don't re, uh, uh, reduce. The other one is that you could, um, you could make the schema, change the schema to make the field no longer available, right? Or optional. Then the object doesn't have the return. So I ask for H, H no longer available. It just doesn't appear in the JSON. Yeah. So, but not very nice. So you may want to deprecate it. You might, may want to add deprecation messages into your written JSON to say that, hey, you know what? This view deprecating in which version, right? So, yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah, true, true. So, I mean, you, you can say you deprecate in, in a certain, certain time frame, right? But that's specifically if you want to remove, yeah, if you want to remove your, your, uh, your uh, the views, yeah, which, 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 um, which, you, you, you don't normally, yeah, it's kind of strange. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it depends on your use case, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, we used uh, GraphQL and I agree it's fantastic. One of the issues we had was where do you put the authorization? And oh. for example, it's right. really good because it's exactly the kind of mm. uh, mutation which yep. you need to be authorized. Yep. So you would probably instead of user ID like authenticate user ID is controlled mm -hmm. user ID down into the context. Right. And then you know, what we found is that then we ended up doing authorization in every single service and it's sort of spread all over the place. Correct. How do you handle that? So there are, there are two ways you uh, one way is that uh, if it's straightforward, you can actually do it at app controller. That is still do, still there. But uh, the way we, we, we do it is that we use JWT, for example. Right? Um, one way is inside here, you don't write actual code. You wrap it around a service class. And there are different types of service class. There's an admin service class, which you derive every other service class. Right? So the admin service class will then check the context to see if you're authorized. And a normal user service class uh, parent class would do other sorts of role checks, right? So let's say there are like five user service class, all deriving from one, yeah, one user service class. That's one way to do it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh no, no. So you write one per role. So for example, I have a a, a uh, mutation right for a standard user, right? I could have different uh, service class for different operations, but they all derive from the service class will have added the code for context uh, checking uh, that gives you the, uh, the user object. Yeah. It, it's very similar to like having a lot of controllers when you have your application controller that does the before. Yeah. Fairly similar in that sense. Yeah. How did you handle uh, when the Uh -huh. Right. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Correct. So, um, so currently, like, say for example, listing students, right? I do student dot all. I could add uh, uh, criteria uh, based on context, uh, based on user. Right, so I could uh, pull in uh, extra data, which then I add to my where clause, which will then return less students. It is possible, yeah. No, 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 no. Mm. I mean, um, some of some of the results. Imagine you're right. returning, you know, list of users, and uh, there's also a friends relation somewhere in the thing. And uh -huh. you can see if they're your friends with the users, you can see their age. But if you don't, not friends with them, you can only see their name. So how would you? Um, Right. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. 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 That that is a bit yeah. I mean uh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No. No. What what he meant is that in an array, certain records have extra attributes. The records has less. The M plus one is a bit tough, yeah, to avoid, yeah, in that sense, yeah. Whether it's a uh, traditional REST or a GraphQL, yeah. That's a tough one. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Oh no, the, the, the joins is still written in the resolvers. So it depends on whether your resolvers do the joins. Yeah, correct, correct. Because you define the schema, you define the types of query you can do. But yeah. Normally, like, mm. with, uh, some data, yeah, right. Know, like, table, right. 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 Uh huh. Well, there are, there, are, there are two things, right? One is that um, assuming you build your own clients as well, right? Then you could run that profiling and do that, uh, do that uh, 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 indexing. And the other thing is that let's assume I have two clients and I add a new one. 
Okay, then you still have to do that profiling on a client. Yeah, the the one that uh, um, so it really depends on whether it's an open API or closed API. I I don't think that GitHub allows um, uh, a lot of uh, 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 what do you call it freedom in in crafting really complex queries on their uh, API. Yeah, and uh, even if it were, then you probably have to use your own GitHub token, which means it restricts to a certain number of uh, repos anyway, right? Um, and also, you could also apply a limit automatically on the um, on the uh, uh, the query itself, yeah. So that even if you perform a join, it returns very few, yeah. It hasn't. We haven't found any major differences uh, per se. Uh, and uh, the only thing I can I have to say is that um, for standard REST, because it's one endpoint per API, uh, you can very easily cache the return JSON, right? For for GraphQL, there are ways to do it, um, uh, but the techniques are not straightforward because they're all post requests. Um, what you can do is object caching at memcache or Redis. Yeah. Uh, can I uh, ask you a question? So we replace a REST API with a GraphQL um, in certain scenarios. So one of the main problems from a, a, a performance perspective is not just the time it takes for Rails to fulfill the request, mm -hmm. but it's also the over the air time mm -hmm. for data, especially right. on mobile, especially right. on even mobile. So the problem with REST from the perspective of performance is that it over effective. Yep. Right? No matter what yep. you need, you might want to use the name of the user. You have to. But you've got your like, template and it's all Correct, and you've got to pull everything in. You've got yes. You yeah. So, in certain scenarios, you would see the request response going down to like 100k to, to mm -hmm. 1. You know, I can't remember the numbers. Right. right. But uh, that would be good. Yeah. And that's one of the. Yeah. That's actually a good example, right? Yeah. So, so everyday use. It's an everyday use case where, like I mentioned, if it's a TV app, you probably say, I want all the preview images of the hotel. Right? So on a mobile app, I want the first one. <laughs> so, any other questions? It's fun. Try it out. <laughs> Even if it's just experiment. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, and Rust, yes, yes. And uh, internally, for our own projects, what we do is that uh, if it's a third-party API that we have to open to another developer, we use Rust because we don't expect them to have the GraphQL client ready. Yeah, yep, yep. And uh, the other thing about GraphQL is that um, uh, a lot of the training materials out there actually teaches you this: you don't have to port your entire app to GraphQL day one. You create a GraphQL layer in between, and then the GraphQL layer can call several different services. Um, you know, so a GraphQL can call directly to database Postgres, Redis, to an REST API, to a bunch of microservices, yeah, and you can mesh that all together into one endpoint. Yeah. So that's one of the migration methods. Um, performance, I'm not sure. I've not done that way. What we have done is that we've provided a bunch of uh, 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 GraphQL APIs or queries to our own clients and RESTful APIs for third party. Biggest skill we've tested this on. Mm. I think you can hit five digit. Shouldn't be a problem, depending on the backend. So, for example, uh, 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 simultaneous uh, transactions, yeah, concurrent. Like this, this is definitely on GraphQL, uh, but the backend is not Rails, so it really depends on the backend again, right? But that's not a problem. You can actually go live. You can fetch stuff. Not a problem. Yeah. So it, it's it's possible. Yeah. It's possible to get very high. Yeah. But it, again, it depends on your your backend and your DB. Yeah. Yeah. But um, um, yeah, it depends on your infrastructure. Uh, of course, the numbers that uh, Facebook has given it's humongous. Here today on Facebook. Yeah. 
uh, apart from the third-party developer APIs. Internally, Facebook uses GraphQL. So the uh, number is too high for most of us to hit anyway. I would not take that number too seriously, per se, because I will never hit the number. Yeah. Um, and I will never have the infrastructure. So, yeah. But to hit a five digit concurrent, not a problem. Should be fine. Yeah. Okay. And we are hiring. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we practice extreme programming. That means pair programming, <laughs> uh, TDD, right? Um, and uh, we use Ruby on Rails, Phoenix. We use uh, React Native, React JS, Electron, GraphQL, JWT for authentication. Um, we still do REST. We do um, Postgres, Apollo. Apollo has a new store. So what happens is that uh, your clients, be it uh, React Native or the web browser will query the store first. You can actually design it to query the store first before creating the server, and then you can create your own cache uh, 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 rules, right? And then what happens is that if the app is offline or the browser goes offline, that is your offline app, becomes your offline app. Um, Infrastructure-wise, if there's any DevOps engineers here, we do Terraform, we do Packer, Docker, Kubernetes, all on AWS currently. We have tried on Aluyun. Yeah, we'll keep trying. Uh, Yep. So otherwise, we're looking for good, good guys uh, who can write, or happy to write code, right? Happy to learn. Yeah. It, you don't have to be a black belt. Okay. You don't have to be a black belt to 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 apply. Uh, any decent developer who knows the real stack is good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. <laughs>